So today we have in my UV printer. This is the one we print all of the Game Boy and Game Gear shells on, so you can have any design printed on a shell that you like. Last week, the UV light broke on it. So it's either gonna be the UV light or the power drivers. Luckily, I know a guy that can fix it, so let's get this back up and running. So this is called a UV printing machine. This one's from China. I've had all of the fancy makes worth 20 grand and more, and they're no different. This is actually probably one of the best and most serviceable. You have effectively a standard printer in here. So this is like an Epson L1800, I believe. You've got the print heads here, which have been converted to UV inks, which are here that you just fill up by pouring ink straight in. And as the name suggests, the inks are UV cured. These are water cooling pipes, and under here is the UV light. So if we go underneath, we can see there's the print head. And over here, this is the UV light. So you can see there, that's the UV light. If we were to unscrew that and remove it, it will look like this. You've got the water-fed pipes here to keep it cool, the power rail, and then the UV dye LEDs there. If it turns out it's not the light, the power for it looks like it's one of these two power supplies. Now, unlike almost every other power brick where it doesn't matter what the current is, the voltage is the same, specifically for LED drivers because LEDs are current-driven, not voltage, they accept an AC input, and you notice the DC output says 24 to 36 with a DC current rating of 900 milliamps. The way these work is they'll actually spike the voltage as high as they need, up to 60 to 70 volts, in order to maintain 900 milliamps at most. Once it hits 900, it will limit. So for LEDs, you have to get a driver that matches the current of the LED. This is completely different than most drivers that are voltage driven. And we can see with the multimeter on there, we're getting 66 volts and a very dim LED. Oh, and there you go, and it pulses on and off randomly. That's obviously a sign, I'd say, the LED is failing. So before we commit to removing all the water cooling and bolting things in, I've just connected a new light, flexible up here. Now this is gonna move left and right, but we just need to see if it works. And all we want to make sure is this isn't water cooled, so if we see it working constant, we just hit the emergency stop. This will help us prove if it's the light before we do any further work. So I've just sent a test print in, just the test pattern. And you can see that light also doesn't. So let's just stop that. So it's either gonna be this ribbon cable, which I doubt it because it's got literally, I think it's 16 pins, four or eight to each, something like that. There's a lot of pins you can see here all joined. So if there was break, it would have to be almost cut through. So we're likely dealing with the actual power supplies have failed. So let's swap them instead. The lid removed to expose more. You can see we have two UVs here. We've got the blue one there and the green one there. They go down to these two drivers under here. So we've got a smaller one there and a larger one there. And they will alternate between power levels. So it's probably got a dim setting and a full brightness setting. I've got two new ones here. You can see one's 900 milliamps and the other's 300. Let's swap both of these out to make sure it's gonna work. So that's the two old ones unbolted and disconnected. We'll just remove them from the mains now. So that's them out. And let's just fit the new ones. And that's the two new supplies in, just resting in place for now until we confirm if they work or not. So let's now just see if we send a test print. Do we get the UV light? And we still don't get power. That now brings us to this control board because both power supplies are here, but it toggles strong and light. So the direct feed going to the printer here, we need to trace back through this ribbon. And if we loop by the UV lights, this ribbon going up here goes to a board that has in written on, out written on, and a coil. And that ribbon is the one that goes to the light. The input measures 56 volts, and there's the output. And we're getting that 50 volt. So let's try this. Let's just connect a new ribbon then from here to replace this one. And instead of just using that ribbon and LED for now, let's just go straight to a brand new UV light. So we have new power rails, new light, new ribbon, and we've measured voltage right at this point. So print's about to start. And there we go, super bright LED. Next up then is to use this new ribbon on the original LED. And I'm just gonna hold this in the air because this is gonna go left and right and I don't wanna install it yet. And let's see, there we go, LED's lit. 
So <laughs> the culprit after all that, it's not the LED. It's not the power rails. It's just literally the straight ribbon that's damaged. So let's swap this out and get this printer back up and running. And we can see once I've removed the old ribbon, you can obviously see that's exactly where the brake is. So instead of folding and bending softly, and this is going back and forward, and that's what these supports are for, it must have got caught and kinked and just basically fractured. So one final run with it assembled. You can see the UV lights working now. Let's just like print the test pattern and if that's all good, I'll get all this cleaned up of all the ink and serviced again, ready for printing. Come out fine. So now we're ready to start printing all of the custom shells again.